This is another video about biblical cosmology. Well, it's a video about flat earth uh, and about... Hi. It's a video about flat earth and about reading your Bible and understanding what your Bible is saying. Ah, the good old days. Time to go back to these sort of videos. They usually go one of two ways. Either the person claims that the Bible says the earth is flat, and therefore it is flat, no matter what the rest of us say, or that the Bible makes no actual claims of its shape, and whatever sounds like a claim of the shape is somewhat metaphorical. And those are both somewhat justifiable positions. The one thing I haven't heard so far is that the Bible says the earth is round, or spherical, or an ellipsoid, something along those lines. And even though the fact that I haven't heard it gives less credibility to the actual book, it does give more credit to the people who are arguing, since unlike in other religions, it is a far more honest interpretation. In Surah Naziat, chapter 79, verse number 30, Wal arda ba'da zalika dahaha, and thereafter we have made the earth egg shape. The Arabic word dahaha, one of its meaning is the earth is an expanse, the other meaning is derived from the Arabic word duya, which means an egg. And it doesn't refer to a normal egg. It refers to the egg of an ostrich. Oh, swing and a miss there, buddy. <sighs> Unfortunately, that particular honesty, even in this particular religion, is not as common as I would like it to be. But credit where credit is due. So, which one is it today, Wormy? Flat Earth or Metaphorical Bible? Really, there's two parts to this. It goes goes both ways. Flat Earth and Christianity should be one and the same. It should just be a known thing that the Bible supports Flat Earth. And I believe that people that, that do understand that the Earth is flat, they should go to the Bible. Mm-hmm. Flat Earth it is. I find the second claim, however, far more fascinating than the first. I mean, come on, sure, of course all Bible believers should believe the earth is flat, but also all people who believe the earth is flat should believe in the Bible, including the more traditionalist followers of Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, and the occasional New Ager. And the reason it fascinates me so much is because I can't name one single movement where this sort of thinking hasn't popped up at some point or another. If you believe in God, you should also believe in scripture X, Y, or Z. That the earth is flat or round or an egg or a carpet and that marriage is a sacred bond between a man and a woman or four women or a dozen. And if you think you can step into the bathroom with the right foot, Prepare to be peeped at by the devil. And if you don't believe in God, you should also believe, or rather listen and believe, in Pokemon genders, the holy spirit of Antonius Fauchus, and that all the dissenters have committed the deadly sin of capitalism and should be cancelled at once. It is such a fascinating way of thinking. It's like watching aliens, except it's super common. Which makes me wonder if I'm the alien. Wait, am I an alien? It seems like there's a lot of people out there that they wake up to flat earth, but then they go off on on these new age things. And flat earth has been co-opted by the new age movement. You see all those cross-dressing queers that are the figureheads of the flat earth community when everybody who's flat earth should say, hey, look, the Bible has been saying flat earth the whole time. Of course, cross-dressing and people of <clears throat> questionable orientation are all super new age and totally not prevalent in the Christian churches whatsoever. Right? And it's been presented to us plainly our whole lives. We just chose to not read it. And... So uh, that's just one thing. I don't, I don't know what else to say about that besides the cross-dressing queers have, have, of course, put their own puppets in place in the flat earth thing. People, you don't understand. The day 
are everywhere. They put their puppet in place to rule us from within. They are taking over my club. Seriously, though, what is it with you and queers? One would think that having more people bring attention to the Flat Earth Club would be beneficial to you. Although to play them as advocate, there are a lot of cases where a group does get a bunch of newcomers that have a particular way of thinking and they then end up pushing the club or the group in a new direction. And while sometimes it is good and sometimes it is not, it usually ends up the same way, which is disgruntling the original members, who then tend to leave and start from scratch with a new group. Is this what is happening here? Are the newbies not Jesus enough for you? Do they make you feel uncomfortable? Anybody who's flat earth should be Christian. And because that's what the Bible says. And it's always been here. It's always been, always been showing us that truth. And we were just deceived. Well, that is one option. One of many. Because remember, flat earth wasn't just a Christian thing. You predominantly know about that one because it is your cultural background. But the Old Testament comes from the Jews, there is a carpet-shaped elf in Islam, and the old depictions of a boar-shaped Vishnu carrying a flat earth on tasks over the water also kind of make you wonder what kind of worldview they used to have, just to name a few. You don't have a monopoly on the flat earth, my dear Wormy, nor does your religion. And I'm afraid in this particular case, you kinda gotta share a bit there, buddy. So another thing is all Christians should support Flat Earth. And this is just because the phony pastors out there either are duped themselves or they are just wolves in sheep's clothing. Hmm, alright, so now that we have recruited all the New Ages into Christianity, let us recruit all the Christians into Flat Earth as well. I see what you're doing there. Very smart. Pastors can't even read the Bible, so what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Did you expect me to debunk this? Seriously? What? My original intention for this video was kind of like a challenge. Challenge your your pastor challenge your local Christian friend, friend, figure out how deep into the Bible do people believe. Yes, challenge them, challenge them all, and record it. And I'm gonna get the popcorn and watch. <laughs> so l make it really easy. Let's start on Genesis chapter one, the very first page of the Bible. Let's start reading the Bible and figure out where Christians' beliefs, beliefs lie. Do they believe what the Bible is saying? How far can we get into the Bible before alleged Christians start doubting what it says? Does that make sense? I'm not going to show the verses because it, it's not going to take us to get very... It's not going to take us long to get to where people stop believing. Makes perfect sense. Yes, good, good plan. Let's read the ultimate truth and see if Christians believe it. Which Bible are we using for this exactly? So, <clears throat> the very first verse of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So, I mean, most Christians, even if they believe in NASA Outer Space Fantasy Land, they, I guess they might still believe in this, but I would, I would say that already verse 1 contradicts NASA Outer Space Fantasy Land. Um... Why? Neither heaven nor earth are strictly speaking specified here. Don't get me wrong, I agree with you that NASA and the Bible are pretty much contradictory, but the problem is that the verse is so vague that basically everything is open to interpretation. On one side you could interpret that earth was basically made at the same time as space, and the sun was made after, because it appears later in the book. But one could also interpret that earth here refers to stuff as in matter, and that heaven, on the other hand, refers to the void. You see where I'm going with this? We have no way to verify what the actual purpose of the verse is, because nothing is really defined in this book, and the people who wrote it are long dead, so we can't ask them either. Because basically verse 1 is saying that this is it, this is all there is, there's earth, there's heaven, that's it. That's what verse 1 says, because if there was all this other stuff, 
then verse 1 would have mentioned it. The The fact that it's omitted means it never was there. Because it, it, if there's allegedly billions of other places just like Earth, then why would verse 1 start with, in the beginning, there was heaven and Earth? Oh, there is a lot of stuff that the Bible doesn't mention, which is what makes it so easy for people to say that verse 1 is metaphorical. But the whole devil's advocate stick aside, of the many, many perspectives that are out there, you or me have one of the takes that I enjoy the most among the Christians. A lot of people twist and tweak their beliefs and the verses in their books to make them fit their lifestyle and reality, and they try to account for discrepancies in one way or another. But you just sit there and try to give the Bible the best interpretation you can, and then you just put a stick into the sand and say, yep, that's my Bible, that's what I believe in. And you do so no matter what the social backlash is. And as awkward and weird as I consider this to be, it takes quite a bit of conviction to be this way. Just as it takes a lot of conviction to be the cookie head who claims that cowpox can be used to make people immune to smallpox, or the cookie head who got rejected for telling midwives to wash their dirty hands before delivering babies, or the one weird cookie head who speaks out against the death penalty for homosexuals in front of the caliph. At the end of the day, we have to admit to ourselves that the status quo is not necessarily accurate. Some of it might be reality, but some of it may also not be, and it needs cookie heads like him to challenge it. And so, for as much as I put fun at you, or me, I am still very very happy that people like you exist. You are weirdly inspiring for all the wrong reasons. Oh goodness, there we go again. Real life is calling, I'm so sorry, Wormy, I will continue this another time. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and also leave a comment. In fact, tell me in the comment section what you think is cookie about yourself. Do you have cookie beliefs that you don't want to share? I want to know. Do I have cookie beliefs that you think are cookie? I want to know those two. Who of us is cookier? Challenge! These wonderful people here are all cookie together with me and are supporting me on top of liking and sharing and sharing and also sharing. And they are absolutely the best. Mwah! Have a great evening. Stop. 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 Ah! Oh. Stop.